I started my menstrual at nine years old and I haven't even had the talk with my parents about menstrual yet. And here comes this blood that just won't stop. So now as I'm getting older, I can never remember when I had a menstrual that wasn't painful. Every month I had a day or two, sometimes three of me throwing up, me having bowel movement, having issues just to stand up because I was so weak. I passed out before. It was pain. And at that time, I didn't have children, but I'm like, this has to feel like labor pains. This has to feel like labor. It didn't make any sense. So now when we, every month we was going to the ER, going to the doctor to have it checked and every single one of them will tell my parents she's lying. There's nothing wrong with her. She's asking for attention and she's just making it up. It took 21 years for me to be diagnosed with endometriosis. Um, I think also I mentioned in the chat, you know, the medical field has a long history of having a racial bias and believing pain of, of um, for people of color. And I think that um, this is one example that we see that. And we've seen other examples in different um, literature in terms of medications given to, you know, people of color with cardiac um, concerns and pain and things like that. And um, I, I definitely in, in kind of researching and reading, I mean, that's been true for endometriosis. I mean, historically, it's been more diagnosed in white um, affluent patients, and I think that's um, I think that's an error. I think that's um, with the bias that we aren't correctly diagnosing chronic pelvic pain in women of color. That's harmful, um, and it's 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 not it's leading to a delayed diagnosis. It's leading to more complications for um, you know women that don't get that um, diagnosis earlier on. So I think that being in the medical field myself, I think. I want to be someone that's hoping to change that, that um, kind of that, that lens, um, even just my, that, oh, the act of just being in medicine myself um, is, is hoping to change that lens. Um, a, a big part of the problem has been cultural bias. I mean, uh, you know, we've been um, culturally, girls are not supposed to talk about painful menses and you're supposed to, you know, you're supposed to woman up. I mean, it's not something that you you're supp you know you should say that you're feeling pain and all that otherwise it shows weakness for you as a woman I started having problems when I was 12 13 years old then when I, I was in my college years I decided to see another doctor and and I remember when she when I saw her she said to me with such disdain that I mean how do you ever expect to give birth if you can't even stand a, 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 a you know a period I mean what kind of woman are you are you know <sighs> Yeah. So from then on, I never, I lied about my period. I lied about what I was suffering from. And I know, uh, you know, perhaps the doctors will, will say, you know, will say that they've seen that with girls coming in and saying that it's food poisoning and yet it's period. You know, we lie. I, I, I lied constantly about, about it being, you know, you know, some, some food poisoning, some diarrhea. I would never say it was related to the period because I was too ashamed to talk about it. So that kind of shame is, 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 is also has held many women back. They don't come out and talk about what they're going through. I wish in that initial diagnosis, I would have asked more questions. I would have taken it seriously. I would have paused for my health, um, would have taken that pause in my career for my health and would have done the work that I'm doing now then. And maybe I could have prevented um, a stage four diagnosis um, maybe I could have saved myself some of the pain I felt for, since then. Um, I just wish I would ask more questions and even rewind back to 2006 and my first surgery. I wish I would have taken that, that health issue a little bit more seriously. Um, because then I probably would have pushed to do some fertility, some freezing of some eggs a lot sooner than when I am now an extremist, um, with all these surgeries. So. I wish I would have just taken a little bit more seriously, asked more questions and educated myself more. Know that like huge blood clots are not like consistently are not normal because I became anemic as a result of it as well. And just think, you know, again, the debilitating way I shouldn't have been vomiting, right? I shouldn't have felt like I was fainting. And so I wish there was, had just been a greater awareness of symptoms even prior. So, you know, I was suffering through my teens pretty silently, but just like, oh, I'm strong. I take pain. I just keep moving, right? I'm an educator. I run schools. I do all these things. And um, 
I just, I wish I had, someone had told me, I wish there was conversation and spaces around me. I wish even in my own family, personal circles, professional circles, uh, that people were more comfortable sharing about their reproductive health. I wish I could say it's the first time I've heard um, all of what all of you said, but it's not. I, I hear it every day. And we know there's a delay in diagnosis because it can be traditionally thought of as difficult to diagnose with all the different types of symptoms, right? We know that there can be a seven to eight year delay in diagnosis. And I'm often the 10th doctor that people are seeking out as a specialist. I think that there has to be a huge change in the medical community and in general about the open dialogue and transparency around of it. So I, I applaud all of you for, for being so open and doing the phenomenal work that you're doing to pay it forward to help other people suffering with this disease. Themes that I heard from every single panelist, number one, advocate for yourself, um, speak up, document, keep notes, ask questions, and for doctors, make sure that you're providing questions and, and notes and answers. Number two, take care of your wellness and your mental space and your soul because Endo is much deeper than um, just pain. It's really about making sure that you are in a mental state of, of support. Um, so whether that's finding a therapist, um, you know, whether that you need to, you know, talk to a psychiatrist about elevating to medications or whatnot, um, really doing your due diligence in that in that way. Mm -hmm.